In this video, we're going to look at uh, some linear word problems and how to write equations using, uh, using the information given in the word problem. Okay, so in example one, in 2010, the profit of a company was $12 million. Since then, their profit has increased by 3.5 million per year. Let P be their profit in the year that is T year since 2010. Okay, so if we, if we were to make a table for the values for T and P, Okay, notice that if we take the year, so 2010, 11, 12, 2013, and 2014. So we'll take several years, and T and P values. So in the year 2010 would be a T value of zero because it's zero years since 2010. And then 2011 will be a t value of one, and then two, three, and four, and so on. Okay, so now p, and we'll represent this in millions of dollars, okay, representing the profit. So in the year 2010, what was the profit? Well, they told us it was $12 million. So we'll put a 12 there, representing 12 million. Okay, and then in 2011, what happened with their profit? Well, it increased by $3.5 million per year. So every year, we add an additional $3.5 million. So if we were to add 3.5 to 12, we get 15.5. And then from 2011 to 2012, we're going to add another $3.5 million and that'll take us to 19 million. And then next year we're gonna add another 3.5 million, that'll take us to 22.5 million. And then another 3.5 million will take us to 26. So notice to get from one year to the next, as the year goes up by one year, or T goes up by one, the P values will go up by 3.5. Okay, so we notice we're gonna add 3.5 every year. Now we're going to come back to that in a minute, but we're going to sketch a graph relating the T and the P values. Okay, so as far as a graph goes for this, we're going to be in the bottom left hand for our axis because there's no negative T or P values for profit. Okay, so T is our horizontal axis and P is the vertical. Okay, we have profit in millions. And across the bottom we have the number of years since 2010. Now, a sketch of a graph, this is different than just than doing a scatter plot because scatter plot you want to try to get the points you know exactly on a grid you know, and, and use your grid to plot the points. A sketch of a graph is just trying to get a general idea of what's happening in our, in our situation. Okay, so what we have here is, in 2010, so zero years since 2010, we're at $12 million. Now, before I go putting a point somewhere um, on the vertical axis we need to think about, it's, it's increasing every year, the profit, um, going up by 3.5 million every year, so, it's getting, so the profit gets higher as time goes on. So we're not going to put 12 million way up here. We're going to put 12 million closer to the bottom. Okay, let's label that as 12 for 12 million. And then increasing. Well, it's increasing by the same amount each year. So it's going to be a linear pattern. Okay, something like this. Okay, notice we're not actually plotting points or making scales or anything. We just want to get an idea of what the graph looks like. Okay, so that's all we need to do for a sketch. Okay, very quick and easy. Now part C is where the real purpose of this, of this video lies, okay, because this is not an obvious thing. We're going to write an equation relating the T and the P. So relating the years since 2010 to the profit. Well, what we look at is, when we look at our table of values, notice that when in the first year there, when T is zero, the initial value was $12 million. How do we get to the next value? We add 3.5 one time. Okay, so one way to look at it is, let me use a red pen here, 
to get to that second value here, we take $12 million and we add 3.5 one time. How do we get to the next value? Well, we took the previous value of 15.5 and we added 3.5. Now the problem though is, is that we don't want to say 15.5 plus 3.5 once because we have two things that are changing. These the value we're starting at and then the value that we're adding each time is 3.5 million. We're just doing it one time each for each year. Okay, now the issue is if we were to start with 12 again, so to get so to get to 19, if we started at 12, because that, that was where we, that was our starting value, okay, that $12 million never changed. Okay, that was the amount that we had in 2010 that, ne that never changed. So we're going to start with $12 million and we're going to add the increase of $3.5 million how many times now? Well, we had to add it once to get to 15.5. Now to get to 19, we have to add it again. So we added 3.5 twice. To get to the next value in the table, we have to add 3.5 again. But if we started at 12 million, we have to add 3.5 one more time than we did before. So that'll be a total of three times now. To get to the next value, if we started at 12 million, we have to add 3.5 another time, which will be a total of four times. Okay, and you can do the you can do the arithmetic there to check it out. So for example, 12 plus 3.5 times 2. Well, 3.5 times 2 is 7. 12 plus 7 gives you 19. 3 times 3.5 will be 10.5. 12 plus 10.5 will give you 22.5. Okay, so you can check out those values and see that that works. And again, that's not an obvious thing, but the key is we always started at $12 million in our initial year. So that value never changed. What changed was the number of years past 2010 that we went. So our equation relating T and P together to find the profit, we start at $12 million and add $3.5 million how many times? Well, this is where the next concept comes in Notice that when we added $3.5 million once, that was the year 2011, which was one year past 2010. The T value was one. When the T value was two, we added 3.5 twice. When the T value was three, we added three times and so on. So how many times are we adding $3.5 million to the 12? T times. So if we were to continue on in this table, so as the year goes on, if we go to T years, how do we find the profit? We would take 12 and add 3.5 T times. Okay, so there's the equation relating T and P together. So now we're going to find the predicted profit in 2017. Okay, we're going to use the equation, which means the equation we just wrote. The year 2017 Okay, that is a T value of 7. Okay, so we're going to say the profit equals 12 plus 3.5 times 7. So doing the arithmetic, 3.5 times 7 is 24.5. So add that to 12, and we get 36.5, or 36.5 million dollars. <clears throat> okay, part E, find the year when we, when we predict the profit to be 47 million. And again, we're going to use our equation. So 47 million, that is now a P value in our equation. So we have 47 equals 12 plus 3.5 T. Okay, solve that equation. You want to isolate the T. So get rid of the 12 first by subtracting 12 from each side. So 35 equals 3.5t. Now 3.5 times t, to undo that, we divide by 3.5. Okay, we get t equals 10. So if t equals 10, the year would be t 
10 years past 2010. So that would be the year 2020. Okay, the next example. Suppose the number of subscribers to a certain website or web service decreases at a rate of approximately 500 subscribers per month since they reached their peak number of subscribers of 20,000. Okay, so the highest number they had was 20,000 and they lost or decreased um, 500 subscribers per month. Let x equals zero represent the month in which they reached their peak number and let y be the number of subscribers. Okay, so here, when you make your table of values, this one is um, fairly straightforward. Okay, if you make your table of values for x and y, okay, after zero months, we had 20,000 subscribers. That was our initial number. After one month, we had lost 500, so we subtract 500 to get 19,500. And then the next month, we subtract another 500 to get down to 19,000 and so on. Okay, so that table is fairly straightforward. Okay, so to sketch a graph, the number of months, we're going to add from 0 through however many values we want to put in for x. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. There's no negative x values. And then the y values, we're not going to have a negative number of subscribers. Eventually, we might reach 0. Okay, but we're not going to have a negative number of subscribers. So our, so our axes, again, will be the like bottom left here, or the, like the L shape. And then X is your horizontal axis, Y will be the vertical. We label the axes, and notice I put 20,000 near the top of the Y axis because we started at 20,000 and decreased from there. So that means we have a decreasing graph. Eventually we'll hit zero down here. Now I got 40, okay, by thinking about if you went um, 40 months, times the 500 for every every month, that'll give you the 20,000 total that you would lose. Now, if you can't find that easily, then that's okay. Again, that's something we'll build on throughout the semester. Okay, then we want to write in part C, we want to write an equation relating X and Y. Okay, so now what we want to look at is, we started with 20,000 subscribers, and we took away 500 how many times? And again, just like that first example, to get to 19,500, we started with 20,000 and took away 500 one time. To get to the next value in the table, that 20,000 initial value never changed, but we have to take away 500 two times now. And then to get to 18,500, we start with 20,000, take away 500 three times. Notice the number of times we take away 500 is the same as your x value. Okay, so our equation, y equals to so the number of subscribers equals 20,000 what we started with, minus 500 x times. So when would we have uh, 12,000 subscribers? Well, 12,000 subscribers, that's a y value. Okay, so 12,000 equals 20,000 minus 500x, and go through and solve that by subtracting 20,000 from each side. And then negative 500 times x will divide by negative 500 to undo that, and that'll give us 16. So after 16 months, we would, would expect 12,000 subscribers. Okay, moving along. Okay, the last example, the percent of uh, students who graduated from a college nursing program was 72% in 2005. Since that time, the rate of graduates from the same program has decreased by 2.1% per year. Let P be the percent graduating from the nursing program T years since 2005. Okay, so to make a table of values for T and P. Okay, so again, if we have the year in 2005, the T value will be zero. 2006 would be a t-value of 1 and so on. Okay, so that's something I expect you to be able to be fairly good at now, okay, is recognizing 
the, the, the what the variable for t would be, or what the values for t would be. And then the percentages. So in the year 2005, what percent did they give us? 72. And then what happened after that first year? So in 2006, decreased by 2.1%. So you subtract 2.1 from 72, and you get 69.9. Keep subtracting 2.1 from that previous value. Okay, so you get 67.8 for the next year, and then 65.7, 63.6. So that's just continuously subtracting 2.1 from the previous value. Okay, and then to write an equation relating to EMP. Well, again, this is similar to the first two examples. To find the percentage, you started with 72, and then you took away 2.1% every year. So how many years did we do that for? Well, T. So again, to find the percentage, you start at 72 and take away 2.1 every year. Okay, so that's how you come up with the equation. Okay, and then in part C, if there's 240 students enrolled in the nursing program in 2017, then how many graduates would you predict? Okay, and again, what I suggest you do is pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Um, as with the same thing with finding the equations and everything, pause the video and you know and try this on your own. Okay, so if there's 240 students enrolled in 2017, we have a little bit of an issue here because 240 students. Is 240 a percentage? No. Is 240 a time? No. So we have a little bit of a problem. We, we can't just use that 240 in the equation that we have. But if we think about it in, th in this context, remember that P represents the percentage of graduates from the nursing program. So if we knew the percentage was, say, 50%, then couldn't we take 50% of 240? That would tell us how many graduates there were we would take 50% of the 240. If P was, say, 80%, I don't want to use 80, sorry. If, if P was, say, 60%, then we would take 60% of the 240, and that would tell us how many graduates there were. So this is really a two-step problem. The first step is finding the percentage using our equation in the year 2017, and then applying that percentage to the 240 students. So we use, in this case, is that in 2017, what percentage did we expect to graduate? So 2017 is a T value of 12. So we're going to put 12 in place of T, and that will give us the percentage of graduates in the year 2017, or the percentage of the class that graduated in 2017. So when we do that, 72 minus 2.1 times 12 gives us 46.8 percent. Again, that is that that is not how many students graduated. That's the percentage of the enrolled students who graduated. So now you take 46.8 percent of that 240, which means you multiply those together. Now remember, 46.8 percent is 0.468 because you have to move the decimal two places. So that'll give you 112.32. Well, unfortunately, you can't have 112.32 people graduate, so you had 112 full graduates. That last person didn't quite make it. <laughs> okay, so, that, so that's a good problem, the kind of problem I like to ask because it makes you understand what the equation is giving you, the percentage. It wasn't giving you the two, um, anything about the 240. It was just the percentage of graduates. And then you have to use that to apply it. Okay, so, so, so questions like this are, are questions that I like. Okay, so that takes care of um, a few more examples of writing equations given a word problem. And this is just something that you need to practice. Okay, that's not always obvious, but if you make the table of values and see the pattern in the table, again, you always have that initial value that we're starting at. Okay, so on this one up here, again, we started with 72%, and then we took away 2.1% how many times? Well, one time... Here's two times, three times, four times, and so on. So how many total times? Well, whatever, whatever T was. 
Okay, so that takes care of this video.